So Tom Brady's gone in New England, but it should be noted. I said last week, I think what they're going to do is like Miami did last year. Create a culture, or in New England's case, maintain it. Not be very good at quarterback. And it's playing hard, playing to win, but losing. And knowing you're going to lose. So the Patriots, Brady's gone, but it's a $23 million dead money hit. That is so on New England. Uh, they have no quarterback, bottom three or four teams in the league in weapons. I don't think their defense is going to be twi- quite as good. Uh, they, Andy Dalton was on the market, by the way. Andy Dalton is better than Jarrett Stidham right now. And he's better than Brian Hoyer, who they brought back yesterday. Why doesn't New England go after Andy Dalton? Playoff experience? Cheap? Better than what you have. Why? It's tanking for Trevor Lawrence. Tanking for Trevor. Now, they're not going to call it tanking. Miami played hard. They created a culture. They won five of the last nine games in Miami. But they knew, ultimately, remember what Miami did before the season started? Joy remembers this. She lived in Miami a long time. We follow the Dolphins closely. They started moving pieces, moving guys, creating a younger team, knowing, hey, it's my first year, Brian Flores. I got to create a culture. You don't have to win to create a culture. You don't. You don't have to win to create a culture. You go back to Belichick's first year. He was creating a culture, and they were 5-11. and 11. So if you look at New England also, Belichick looks at his schedule. For the first time ever in New England, it's ranked as the toughest in the NFL. They go to the Rams. They go to Seattle. They go to Kansas City. They go to Houston. They face the Ravens and the Niners and Denver's defense. Again, why aren't they going after Andy Dalton? He's cheap. He's better than what you got. Why? Ask yourself, how many teams next year in the NFL do we know are going to be bad? There's not many. The Jags also appear to be pulling a Miami of last year. They're thin at quarterback. They've traded top players. They're very young. Jags are not going to be a good football team. We know the Bengals have a rookie quarterback. They'll draft Burrow. They have a second-year head coach. The division has gotten better. Everybody's better. The Browns are better. The Ravens are better. The Steelers Steelers get Big Ben back. And we know they have the weakest roster. The Bengals will not be good next year, with or without Joe Burrow. The Jags will not be good. My guess is the Redskins won't be great. You know, Ron Rivera is not a magician. At this point, Dwayne Haskins. You know, if they went 8-8 this morning, wouldn't we all acknowledge, wow, Haskins worked. This is great. 8-8 would be great. So I think there's about three teams in the NFL, and I think keep your eye on the Giants struggling because new coach, young quarterback. But by and large, New England can play hard, accumulate draft picks, uh, lose close games. They're not very good at quarterback. They're not very good at weapons. Slightly worse on special teams. They go 6-10. and ten. They maintain their culture. They maintain it. They still outwork everybody in the room. They lose... They don't have enough offensive weapons in an offensive league. And you look up in New England's losing a lot of 24-20 games. Um, Very interesting. Patriots never interested in Andy Dalton. That tells me they got a plan. And the plan is maintain the culture, play your arse off. Six and ten. It's not going to be a lot of bad teams in this league this year. Not Not a lot of tire fires. And you end up in the top six or seven pick. You get a quarterback... Uh, because remember, not everybody who's at the top of next year's draft, Cincinnati's going to be bad. They don't need a quarterback if they draft Burrow. The Giants could be bad. They don't need a quarterback. They got Daniel Jones. Jacksonville is the only team this morning I wake up and think, going to be bad, would we'll draft a quarterback. A lot of those bad teams are getting quarterbacks this year. Cincinnati's getting a quarterback. Giants just got a quarterback. If Dwayne Haskins works if he goes 7 and 9 500 they're not drafting a quarterback i think new england has a plan i think belichick thinks about everybody and my guess is that's their direction i do not believe we're going to have nfl otas those are in late may i don't think it's going to happen i my opinion has always been uh best case scenario is july uh, that's why i cross my fingers for the nba but i'm not very hopeful hopeful as i think about that this morning but um, so how does that affect the NFL? Because at this point, I everything I'm reading, I do think we'll have an NFL season. And I thought to myself, Lord, what a disadvantage. 
if you're a new coach with a new system and new coordinators with a young quarterback and you can't meet. What a massive disadvantage. In fact, let me give you a number. Last year, we had eight new NFL head coaches. Eight. One had a record of 500 or better, and that was with OTAs and with camps and with a full exhibition season. It is highly likely there's going to be no camps, and we could even have potentially an abbreviated uh, preseason. So for me, I look at Joe Judge with the New York Giants. New coach, new coordinators, Daniel Jones is young, big disadvantage. Kevin Stefanski, Cleveland, smart guy. New system, can't meet with his players, can't implement it. Matt Rule at Carolina, I think he's brilliant. And I love veteran Teddy Bridgewater. Unfortunately, no camps. Uh, even if you're a veteran coach, Mike McCarthy, and a fairly veteran quarterback now. Dak's now, what, going to go into his fifth year? It, disadvantage. Uh, Ron Rivera, who I think very highly of, with a young quarterback. I think Ron's excellent. Big disadvantage. And I thought this morning, there are really about eight or nine teams I wrote down where you've got a head coach who's been around, a quarterback who's got a couple of full seasons in him, and there haven't been a lot of what I would call coordinator changes or top assistant changes. Big advantage for, and let me read the teams, Seahawks and Niners, Eagles and Saints, Falcons and Ravens and Texans, and I think to some degree, the Rams. But let me give you an example with the New York Giants. And I think they're getting better and better and better. But the Giants have a new head coach in Joe Judge, who's never been a head coach, and an all-new system, and a young quarterback. Think about the defenses they're going to play. Because it's much easier to implement a defense than an offense, right? Eagles twice, Seahawks, Niners, Browns, Steelers, Raven defenses, and the Bears. And a Tampa Bay defense that played very well at the end of last year. That's just bad news for the Giants. That is a decided disadvantage. So as I, I went through the standings this morning, and, you know, as things change, the more they stay the same. I thought to myself, I'm going to pick the top two teams in each division based on head coach, quarterback symmetry, and a lack of major coordinator changes. I think I got this right. So in the AFC East, that's the biggest change. No Patriots. Bills win the division. Jets second. I picked the Bills over the Jets because, frankly, I like their coach more. Bills and Jets, though. Same coach, same coordinators, same uh, quarterback. AFC North, Ravens first, Steelers second. Big Ben comes back, but he was off a year. Ravens have almost no new changes offensively. AFC South, Texans, Titans, flip a coin. I like Deshaun Watson more than Ryan Tannehill, so I'd probably go with the Texans over the Titans. AFC West, Kansas City should be an overwhelming favorite. And I would say the Las Vegas Raiders. Gruden's back. The band's together. Here's Derek Carr. Raiders, I think at least early in the season, it's an advantage. In the NFC, Eagles, Cowboys. Now, the Cowboys have a new head coach. I think that hurts a game or two. Eagles, Cowboys would be my order. NFC North, Green Bay first, Minnesota second. Minnesota's got a new offensive coordinator. Again, no OTAs. Less time equals less pressure preparation equals less chemistry. NFC South, it's a big win for the Saints and the Atlanta Falcons. Not as much Tampa, Brady, and Arians, who I think will be productive, but I think it could get very ugly in early September. NFC West, Niners have better personnel. I'd say they're one. Seattle second. Now, the Rams are unique where you get Goff and McVay, but they've had a lot of roster changes to key spots. They've got a new defensive coordinator. Uh, I think they have a new special teams coach. They have a new offensive coordinator. So I see too many. Too many and it, Todd Gurley's gone. So I, I think Niners Seattle have an edge because of continuity uh, over the L.A. Rams. So I guess my point is, you know, you, and for the record, outside of the Patriots, when I, when I list those standings, you know what's interesting? It's mostly the same as last year. It is mostly the same standings as last year, New England being the huge exception. Hi, everybody. Thanks for watching. Subscribe here to get the latest from the show. Also, be sure to check out more of the best clips from The Herd or go watch a few segments from other shows on FS1.